Ladies and gentlemen. So, my battery's about to die on my phone. So, I know I always say this is going to be a quick video, but this is actually going to be a quick video because I don't even know if I can record that long. But anyway, the first time I tried to bind my FGR4S receiver to my Flysky Noble NB4 radio, it would not bind. And this is a video, me telling you how to fix that issue. So, first of all, things you're gonna need is any ESC, a battery for your ESC, your receiver, your bind plug, and your radio and a computer, and the internet, and the wire that came with your Noble, which is just a, what is it, that micro USB mini? I can't remember. That one. The one that is the norm before Type-C started being on everything, especially on like cell phones for chargers and stuff. But anyway, this, you may be able to do what I'm about to show you without doing this part, but the very first thing that I did when I opened up my Noble I went to, I typed in Flysky Noble NB4 firmware update because there is the newest version, which is 2.0.79. And the, let me show you how to check what your number is, version number. Welcome to Noble. Welcome to Noble. So you go to menu, system, I believe, about Noble. Flysky Noble firmware 2.0.79, November 27th, 2019, hardware 1.2. Um, so yeah, when I got this, it was at 2.0.78. And before, like when I ordered it and I was waiting for it to come in the mail, I went on to the Flysky website to see if there was a firmware update. Because when this first shipped out, it was only a four channel receiver. Um, but there was an update that gave you the full use of all eight channels that it is capable at this moment of doing. It can be a four channel, a six channel, or an eight channel. You can set it to be whatever you want. Um, I left mine on four because the receivers that are available right now are only four, or so I thought. I have heard that you can use any receiver from Flysky that uses this AFHDS protocol, and there are 10 channel receivers for like model airplanes and stuff that use that same protocol that I have heard and I have read and people have told me that they can be used with the Noble. So therefore, if you have a 10 channel receiver and you have an eight channel radio like the Noble, you can use all eight channels. But anyway, I uh, I wanted to update the 2.079. So I did. Also, real quick, something I discovered. Say you're in any channel, instead of pushing back a bunch of times, if you just push the power button, it's the same thing as pushing home. All right, so basically download, scroll down to the bottom of this page somewhere, there we go. Download 2.079, 2.0.79, that's the newest one. Once you download it, put it somewhere easy to remember. I put mine on the desktop. Go to your desktop, double click this file right here. It'll open up this little thing. Plug in your radio. Go to system. Firmware update. Updating this transmitter firmware may cause model data to be restored to factory defaults. Are you sure? Uh, click yes, and then it will show the bus ID on here. It'll show that it's plugged in. Click update. Do not unplug it while it is updating, and it will update. So, oops. Once it is your radio is updated, you now need to update your receivers. In order to update your receiver, and that's what you have to do by the way, that's why it was not binding. It was because your receiver still has the older firmware that it was shipped with, and your radio now has the newest firmware. So for some reason they can't communicate when they're like that. So all you have to do is update your receiver's firmware. And then it, it was, it updated immediately. It, uh, it bound immediately. So in order to update your receiver, go to RX set and update receiver. Pick the receiver that you wanna use. This works for both of them. This is the little one. This is the big one. 
and then you click on updates. Please connect FGR4S or P or enable P to enter mandatory update mode. And you push OK. Now that will not do anything until you put your receiver in mandatory update mode. And how you do that on both the little one and the big one is you take your bind plug and instead of putting it on bind like that like you normally do you turn it sideways and on the top you put the first pin on bind and the second pin wherever it lines up it's only three but it ends up being you connect bind to channel four so in case you lose your actual bind plug you can use just any wire just make sure it's a good connection and connect the signal of bind to the signal of channel 4. And then you plug this into any other plug. That's what the thing says. The manual literally says any other plug. I'm going to put mine in channel 2, like you normally put your receiver in when you're running the car. So I'm trying to do this with one hand. Let's see here. Okay. That is now on channel 2. And then, what you do is go grab a battery and plug that battery in like you normally do. And then all you do is turn on your car. Oops, I'm not even pointing at it. Trying to get everything so it lines up. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. All right, that's still not doing anything. Oh, and that's telling me that I haven't touched my radio in a while. And all you do, turn on the car. And as you see, the radio starts updating. Update success. The receiver will now start blinking three blinks slower. That means it's done. Turn your car off. And that's it. Your receiver is now updated to the newest firmware. If it'll focus. And that is how you do it on the big one and the little one to put your receiver in update mode that's how you hook it up so hook it up like that to those pins plug in the power and update it and when you're done take that out bind your receiver to your radio you do the normal things that you always do with every other receiver put the bind plug in the bind port and on the noble you have to actually go to the bind screen Binding. see it's in the regular bind mode now um. Make sure that you put your radio on the model that you want to bind this new receiver to. Like it was on Armatyphon, that's where my big receiver is, that one's already done. Make sure you switch it to the channel that you want to use. Otherwise you'll be erasing the receiver that's on your main channel and replacing it with the one that you're binding now. So once you do that... Make sure your receiver is in the bind plug and just turn on your car. Binding successful. That's it. Easy as that. Literally as easy as that. As soon as you turn it on, it binds. And then turn it off. Signal lost. 
take your bind plug out, turn it back on, and you'll know you're bound when you get all the information. RX voltage, 4.98 volts. Signal strength, 1 to 100. RSSI, it's negative 46 decibels. And if you go to sensors, display sensors, you get a little bit more info. Now these are just the sensors that are built into the, the receiver and the radio. There is a spot on the receivers. These little ones can't do sensors, but the bigger ones can. But once you hook up the sensors to the other receiver, this radio is capable of doing two-way simultaneous communication, which means while you're hitting the throttle and steering or doing whatever you're doing, at the same time that your receiver is receiving the signal to drive and turn and do all that, it's also sending back the information from the sensors, which can be temperatures, speedometers, uh, altimeters, or altimeters, whatever they're called. Right, there's all sorts of stuff. And another thing that I did not know, this radio uses the sensors from the IT4S. So it's a completely different radio, but those are the sensors that you use on this. But that's for another video. I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. That is how you fix your receiver not binding to your radio. Update your radio, update your receiver, and that's it. Bind it, and you are completely done. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Just one quick video. I wanted to put something out today. Uh, feel free to leave a question, and I will get back to you. All right, guys, take it easy.